Hello guys and welcome to this Patreon post. As you guys can see here, I already scanned all my thumbnails from the previous post and I have placed them here. After getting some feedback, a lot of my colleagues uh, preferred the number one, which happens to be the one that I thought it was the strongest as well because of those things that we already talked about. Uh, composition is nice, it has two characters, it's a little different from what we've seen before. And that's the one thing we know, right? Uh, that difference is the spice of life. So let's go ahead and change it up. And that's how exactly I want you to think whenever you are working with your comic book do not just feel constrained to one thing spice it up change it up a bit uh, sometimes change is good especially if you have been doing the same thing for a while what i'm doing now is just selecting my regular brush by the way i'm using photoshop to create my pencil work so very nice very simple uh, a couple of things there that you may want to look out for is when selecting the brush, just select any any brush that comes with Photoshop. I am actually a fan, believe it or not, of the... Sorry about that. I'm actually a, a big fan of the just generic brushes that comes with Photoshop uh, because, number one, most of the time I'm working in different computers, not really on my own. So if I'm depending on a custom brush that I've created I have to take it with me um, and that unfortunately is just not something that works out um, all the time sometimes I just have to make do with what I have and what I would have is just the default Photoshop brushes so therefore my suggestion to you if you're using Photoshop or any software for that matter and where you know that you cannot, that you might have to switch it up because of limitations, maybe you at work, or maybe, you know, if you always work from your computer, then go ahead and use your own brushes. But if you do not always have access to your computer, try to find little workarounds, okay? So now is the time to move on and create this pencil work, as you guys can see here. Um, and now we are developing those characters thoroughly what used to be just a simple two minute sketch now it has turned or will turn eventually into a full on sketch with the characters and, and details where we will be able to understand what's really going on so like i said the thumbnail it is a very important for you to just have an idea of what that is and as long as you understand that thumbnail you're good to go uh, hopefully when you have people you're showing this to they'll be able to understand it as well if not then that's okay at least you will have a very clear path in where it is that you're going at that point with your comic book cover so over here now at this stage all I want is to drop in just those general um, type of features, right? That you would see in a character. So nothing really more than that. I know how my characters look, right? I have some characters I have created previously, some character sheets. Maybe I can show that a little bit later if we go into creating the artwork of the wild warriors i might be able to show some of that so let me know let me know maybe that's something that you would like to see and i'll be more than happy to share it with you but going back to this at this point uh, notice how rough i'm being with my line work i'm not really being too overly concerned with little details Right now, all I want is to make sure that the entire idea is reading well. And you would see um, how I approach that. So right now I'm just drawing some of the hands for the character above, the character below. His name is Rog, 
he goes by Rog. His name is Rog Vault. And he is, as you guys can see here, trying to escape, right? Uh, and then he, there is this big shadow, right, of a character, this bounty hunt, bounty hunt. Fuck. And then there is this big shadow behind him, this bounty hunter character that is after, after that is that is after him so i'm doing my best to put all this information together in this little space so one thing that i really enjoy about digital artwork is that i can cut things out scale them up or down make them right bigger or smaller i can uh, flip it or turn it if i need to and that's one of the reasons why digital is so flexible if i were to do this traditionally which is always an option you know nothing wrong with that um, it's just going to take you longer and just just be uh, mindful that things that could take you here a very few minutes to edit when you're doing a traditional artwork you just have to erase the whole thing and kind of start over and it's just part of the process right I do believe that having a traditional background, like knowing how to work traditionally first, is certainly coming handy before jumping into digital. Like if you're solely a digital artist and you have never worked in any traditional mediums, I think you're missing out. You're missing out some of that development, that, um, that thinking, that way of thinking that comes from working with these traditional mediums. Um, so I suggest that if you have never worked traditionally, maybe start there, right? I think it's a great starting point. It allows you to understand better uh, the dynamics of your drawings and, and I think gives you a very solid foundation. Uh, and then go into digital, because at that point, it's just gonna be easier for you to tackle uh, more complex sceneries or objects or drawings by using what you have learned traditionally and then apply it into the digital uh, realm. So yeah, this is all uh, good and fun here. So you guys can see, I, this project, this line work that you're seeing right now actually took a little while, you know, um, I would say roughly roughly an hour roughly an hour a little bit more a little bit less i have speed this up a little bit i often speed it up like maybe five to ten times um, so that you guys can see those changes quickly this is a slow process guys i don't really rush this at all um, you know there might be a stage that i do it a little bit quicker than others but i want to make sure that the structure is there so right here, once you lay down what things are, which is exactly at the stage that we're in, then and only then you can start putting in some time into the structures. You can see there I've been working with that hand, character's hand there for a while. I like jumping back and forth. I don't like just sticking to one thing. Um, so now I'm working at the very top of the page with that character's arms with the other character's hands and arms right as he's jumping forward to attack the other character at the bottom it is a good idea to also add a little bit of a background and because over here i have two characters that are so overpowering in the whole composition i decided to keep a very simple Kind of like a spotlight type of background doesn't really show much but it is something that uh, it would add just a slightly depth uh, depth of field in our comic book cover here you know little tweaks now for the logo the logo no, does, never changes right the logo should always be very consistent and that is something that if anybody is familiar with branding 
uh, how to brand something uh, you should know like logos are like sacred right once you have that logo happening you do not change them unless it's like approved by 10 people right um, that um, that work on, on that company so this is my own if I wanted I could change it but I'm not going for that I want to make sure that through all these comic books my logo state stays consistent okay over here I'm doing another one of those techniques that you can only do digitally which is just a flipping an image so I want to make sure that both hands the left and the right look exactly the same so making a quick selection and then flipping things through is often helpful okay so now what I do here is a little bit of a change I have a my pencil work as you call it things are good to go and now I'm ready to start cleaning my work up so when it comes to cleaning now is the time to sit down and buckle up because this process can be a little bit tedious I personally enjoy it uh, but it can be a little bit tedious because now it's all about creating clean lines not only that there is some sort of energy that is included within the first sketch that I want to make sure to capture as I move forward into cleaning up my artwork so in order to correctly address all the details I not only want to make indications of them but I also want to make sure that I include um, as much structure as possible uh, from my character so that it reads well and keep the lines very dynamic so that they feel alive and not just still and dead right so inking it is another process that if you have never done it before it might take you a little bit to get just right but guys it's really all about practice keep on practicing keep on pushing um, these things you start getting as you keep practicing there are many books and many tips we can still talk about when it comes down to inking right it, it is a subject matter on its own um, but the idea is that you're able once again to translate that dirty sketch into more clean lines into more of a final product some tips that I can give you for inking uh, number one keep the line weight the line width varied throughout if you just use one type of line width line thickness through your whole entire comic book it's just gonna be boring so keep it varied um, when in doubt black it out right that is something I actually end up reading in one of these uh, comic books uh, instructional books that they sell out there right now it's gonna slip my mind which one it is um, I think is the little inking if I'm not mistaken uh, but anyways I'll, I'll probably um, look into that uh, if I was you there are many different books that talk about the whole entire process of inking and of course by watching these videos you will learn the basics or at least you will learn what has worked for me so number one I tend to just go with a different type of line weight uh, through my whole sketch cleaning it up making it nicer and thinking about where the light is coming from I think that when you're inking that's probably one of the most important things uh, for you to pay attention to where the light is coming from notice there where I'm at right now um, that under lip has a little bit of shadow there right and in that area there's just a little slightly uh, thicker line right underneath the goggles there's just that thicker line underneath you know the the, the, the line closer to the eyebrows uh, on the goggles it's just slightly thicker all this just enhance the overall quality of the artwork
it's very important that we understand what it is that we're looking at so you know things like hands perspective uh, in they need to be on point the structure of the objects all of that needs to read very well so over here you just saw a little bit of foreshortening in that hand right when we talk about foreshortening we mean the type of hand that or sorry the type of view that shows an object getting closer to you uh, that hand uh, on that side uh, that we were just mentioning uh, has that effect this one that we're working on right now not so much still there is a little bit of that uh, make sure that again all the details are there as much as possible um, and I think that's part of the beauty of constructing this whole entire um, just illustration uh, that I find so appealing. The fact that I can get above, I, I can get on top of the drawings that I already made and now just decide what lines are important, what lines should be there. To reiterate, it is all about the actual line weight where the light is coming from now the next stage here that you will see in a minute is going to be all about start to adding shadows all right so let's go ahead and just finish up some of the line work here this is very important that you're mindful about the final product through this stage really trying to visualize how is it gonna look finished okay it's almost like going and revising every single little thing notice how uh, I'm still adding some details here and there still thinking about the structures on the hands and the fingers the pouch making sure the pouch looks nice here I'm just looking at you know the legs and just adding a little bit of hints of shadows here and there hints of muscles darkening up some of the areas we go and now we are off to blocking out start blocking out all the black areas now in my opinion this is where things start coming to life that shadow just creates such a dramatic effect on the illustration very enjoyable to look at Again, uh, light source coming from above, so therefore uh, the, some of these areas have to be full on in shadows. Remember that rule of thumb, if you're in doubt, block it out. That's something we try to use a lot, um, especially because of gen genera too that we're working with. Um, this particular one, the Wild Warriors, is not about happy, campy. Uh, characters actually uh, these are characters which all of them are kind of dark uh, to a certain extent so therefore I want to make sure that the actual style reflects that okay so now I'm trying to block everything that is gonna be on shadows um, however I'm trying to be conscious about not to overdo it 
uh, believe it or not uh, unless it's like a villain i would use more dark areas uh, than when it is maybe one of a hero like a hero type of character hero type of characters i try to refrain they still have some shadows but not as much um, villains i try to really uh, push it as far as the shadows uh, to make more of a dramatic impact Okay, now this particular angle is also a little bit challenging um, in my opinion It's not the easiest angle to approach because it's all directly coming at you and That can be sometimes a little bit problematic um, Is all about that foreshortening that we talked about earlier making sure that the character is reading is reading well is reading as if the actual uh, arms and forearms are going forward at you now um some ways in which you can approach the foreshortening here would be to overlay and that's the way i do it i start overlaying uh, different objects in front of each other and that often tends to work nicely um, so for instance when we look at rog uh, rock vault uh, at the bottom um, well right now um, it's kind of locked out but the actual arm holding that pouch the one um, looking at you so it will be uh, our left so the one in, in, in the left area that we're looking at uh, that particular arm that has that foreshortening if you can tell so we have the fingers overlaying the hand and then the hand overlaying the forearm and then the forearm is overlaying the bicep area so it's all about overlapping objects that will help you to create that effect So adding a little bit of shine and at this stage it's almost like just working with the black and white um, as we try to create as much detail as possible some areas uh, at the end might look a little bit more rougher than others but they and, and it's okay if things look a little bit rough here and there it doesn't have to be perfect we're not going for, for perfection. We're just going for readability, stuff that can read well, right? Um, that's one beautiful thing about creating artwork is that you don't have to literally draw everything. You know, you can just put some indicators of certain areas and let the mind fill in the gaps for you. That's a beautiful thing and it works out very very well this is also what i consider to be high detail when we are um, inking in this stage and we have finished to block out most of the areas i often try to add lots of textures as well so i think about the materials and then i try to add more details uh, or as much details as I, as I can think of uh, to develop that form. So this could be a combination of hashing, cross hashing, um, adding white areas just like I did there underneath the hand on the palm of that character, um, trying to soften out some of the black areas so that they meet well with the actual line work and just a combination of all of that uh, put together really just allows you to end up with a very nicely finished looking product another rule of thumb always try to make a thicker outline for the characters this will help them stand out uh, the lines on the inside can be thinner but the thicker the outline is the more the character will stand out 
okay there you have it uh, because uh, my character on the foreground is literally in front of the other character I added a slight white outline and that also will help him ultimately pop in front of the character on the back Okay, so there we have it. More shadows, just touch ups here and there. Now going back and kind of fixing some of that top area, and there you have it, good folks. For this one, I decided to hide uh, some of the title. Right. Um, again, we're not manipulating the logo, but we're hiding some of it, which I think um, it just creates a different dynamic than what we've seen before. And the other comic books, um, remember, this is issue five. So by now, um, just by looking at the logo, um, the idea is that people will be able to recognize it and, and know what it is. Um, I still went ahead and moved the up a little bit so that the letters are still more readable this is actually uh, quite easy using wh uh, what is known as clipping masks and here you have it i'll see you guys in the next one